Hi again, Taganzor here. And this time we'll be going through the brush and the pencil tool. I know it's, it's really simple to learn, but you know, there's different options you can use with it. So let's start with our brush tool. I'm going to head and do some circles. They come in handy. I don't know how, but I'll show you in a while. So right now you have it, the colors over here you choose, and you have to make sure which one of these is in your choice that you have different colors. You have one for the brush, you have one for the pencil, you have one for the paint bucket tool. So right now I've chosen black. So you can do all kinds of different options here, it shows you. Um, so let's start with the regular drawing. Well, you can just draw, right? That's one thing. So I could just draw this. Right. That's taken Zor. Um right. You could also paint with painting behind. So say for example I'm drawing these circles and I don't really want to mess up the drawing over them, so I could actually draw behind them. So, say you want to draw something behind. What purpose would that serve? Well, I'm going to show you in a few. A typical example, of course. So you can draw behind your previous drawings. So I could have black, then I get white, then I get red, then I get green. I have blue, it draws behind those two. Right? I'm a vectorized line. So you can draw behind your strokes, your shapes, whatever is necessary. Next one is the repaint brush, which allows you to repaint over what you've drawn already. So I have these. I'm just going to give them a color with my paint tool. You know, nice stone color. Right. I'm gonna show you how to use that tool. Um, so I'm just going to go here and choose my repaint. So I can just draw over here my white, right? Probably take a long time to do something like something, right? But unfortunately, it won't show because what it's just for is just to repaint something. So I could just get my black here, and I could just do run a right a line right through them all, right? And this is what would happen. It would only save the parts that are well intersecting with colors. So it's just repainting what as is already painted. Alright. You also have one that's auto flatten. I'm just gonna ignore this one for now, automatically create color art, which has to do with this one here. As in whenever you draw it automatically creates something, it should automatically create something in this area here. I have a problem. It seems my stroke is not dead. All right. So let's just try out that automatically create color art thing. Hoping it's gonna go well. So here we are with all red, and I'm automatically going to generate my color art. So I'm just gonna come to my color art view. Oh wait, sorry, still on the repaint. So let me come back here. And I'm just gonna draw this, this, and this come to our color art and you'll see that it has pretty much saved what I've driven drawn as well strokes for some reason they're kind of invisible let me zoom in this is my drawing so that's how you'd s create for color art layer right all right you have auto flatten, which I believe I've shown before. I don't think so. No. Um, just gonna draw, say for example, this area. I'm just gonna draw like a pair of glasses, right? And before, when I was showing you the whole intersection thing, um, 
when you draw everything with auto flatten it automatically flattens everything in general what happens is that everything is treated as a separate object right so I figured out a little while back um, in the um, I believe it was uh, which tool was it ah yes this one the select tool you have this option here which is called distribute the layers you notice I have six drawings here and I have my layers on here so I'm just going to click on this and it should create more drawings so we go through our timeline here the layers you see that I have like everything here and I could just click on this one and hide each one separately right so you have the everything basically distributed into different layers of course I don't think most people would want to do that I know I, I don't usually do that all right back to our paintbrush you can also choose the different shapes you have the different brush types you can add brushes you can rename brushes with this one here you can name a brush right you have different shapes that they give you and this part here controls how smooth your drawings turn out or like how smooth it is here or its line or its well stroke and you have the thickness of it here as well as how the tips are too so usually mine I usually have mine tapered next we're gonna go into the pencil tool here's your pencil tool which is almost like your brush only just using a pencil uh, here we are so you have draw behind which you have that tool with a pencil you also have the automatically create color art there too you have auto flatten as well and you have auto close gap so I'm just going to show you the auto close gap because we should understand the rest of these already um here we go so draw a line let me just press K so it actually shows the stroke of the lines and I'm just gonna draw like so it kind of joins them together they're in close proximity of course in vector objects you know close proximity is really relative but you can always fix that you know going back to the contour editor just match them on top of each other make sure you're choosing a line to snap to contour and snap to contour and we should be okay now except for that one little thing in there <laughs> anyways so that's a pencil tool there hope that was a helpful video and thanks again for watching I like to read Ephesians sometimes it's a really good read you know lots of stuff about life and righteousness alright take care God bless you and enjoy your day or night whichever way whichever time you're watching take care